today we're going to be doing a physical exam. So you can just go ahead and take a seat over there. So I'm going to begin by washing my hands, sanitizing them. So an inspection of the patient. Uh, Courtney looks mentally alert, uh, slender figure, and uh, no signs of immediate distress. Just sit here. Okay, just keep your arm here, thank you. And just relax your arm. So blood pressure is 102 over 68, left arm seated. Courtney, I'll just, I'm going to take your temperature with this, so just hold this underneath your tongue until it beeps, okay? And I'm going to take your heart rate as well. Great. So sublingual temperature is 36.6 degrees Celsius. Heart rate was 68 beats per minute, regular rate, rate and rhythm, and respiratory rate was 12 breaths per minute. Uh, it was unlabored. Courtney, I'll get you to take a seat here. Okay. So an inspection of the upper extremity. Skin is warm to touch. Just check your finger. Capillary refill is less than two seconds bilaterally. On inspection of the face, uh, features are symmetrical. And just looking at uh, Courtney's hair here, it's thin but evenly distributed. Any pain with that? No. Nope. Okay. So head is uh, normal cephalic atraumatic. Uh, scalp was clear as well. Uh, Courtney, I'm going to be checking your eyes. Okay. Uh, do you wear any lenses or contact lenses? No. No. Okay, great. So we'll start with um, just, I'll get you to cover your right eye. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. and then read this bottom line from left to right. 426739. Okay, and then switch hands and cover the other eye and read that same line backwards. 937624. Great. So visual acuity is 20 out of 20 bilaterally uh, without corrective lenses. And now, Courtney, again, um, I'm going to just uh, be checking some more of your vision. Okay. So um, just stare at the bridge of my nose. Okay. Let me know when you see my hands come into your view. Yep. Okay, and which one's wiggling? That one. Great. And again? Yep. And which one's wiggling? That one. Excellent. So peripheral field's intact in all four quadrants. Uh, and now I'm going to be uh, looking at your, your eyes a little bit closer. So on inspection of the uh, eyelids, there's no sign of ptosis. Sclera are clear and white. And just look up at the ceiling a little bit. And conjunctive are slightly pale. Um, and now I'm going to get you to stare straight ahead still. Okay. And Look at the bridge of my nose. Great. It's still straight ahead. Okay, so no opacities, no crescentic, sh crescentic shadow, uh, and the corneal reflection is symmetrical, slightly medial. And still just look straight ahead. Okay, and direct and consensual reaction to light. And just look at the tip of my pen here, and then find a spot behind it on the wall and then look back at the pen, and then back at that spot on the wall. Great, near-far reaction intact bilaterally. And now, um, just looking at the tip of the pen still, don't move your head, just trace it with your eyes, okay? Great, and continue. Great, so cranial nerves three, four, and six are intact bilaterally. Uh, extraocular muscles uh, moved uh, with conjugate gaze and convergence was also achieved. So Courtney, I'm going to take a look inside your eye with, uh, with this one. Okay. Okay. So just find a spot behind me on the wall and stare straight and try to look at that and just try and look through the bright light, okay? Okay. Great. Keep 
keep staring behind you at that at behind me at that spot. Great. So red reflex seen in both eyes. The optic discs were visualized. They had clear borders, no signs of papilledema, uh, no AV nicking, and uh, everything looked great. Okay, Courtney, now I'm going to be checking your hearing. So I'm just going to be going behind you and whispering some letters and numbers and just uh, tell them back to me, okay? Okay. So I'll get you to cover your right ear. TLR. Great. 72R. 72R. Great. So auditory acuity is intact bilaterally. On inspection of the ears, uh, everything looks normal. Let me know if there's any pain with this. Nope, that's fine. Okay, so negative tug test. Okay, and then just tilting your head slightly. So there was uh, just a little bit of cerumen in the auditory canal. The tympanic membranes uh, were both visualized free of perforations um, and the malleus was also visualized. And now I'm going to be looking uh, in your nose, Courtney. Uh, so first I see that your nose is symmetrical, uh, nothing looks uh, abnormal. And I'll get you just to take a breath in and uh, tilt your head back slightly and just hold your breath. Okay, and breathe, and then breathe in again, and hold. Great. Okay, so the middle and lower turbinates, turbinates were visualized. Um, all muco uh, mucosa was slightly pink, and just a slight discharge, but it was clear. Let me know if there's any pain with this. Nope. That's okay, so palpation of the maxillary and frontal sinuses was non-tender. And now I'm going to be just inspecting your mouth. Um, lips look symmetrical. I'm going to get you to open your mouth for me. Great. Okay. And then uh, just say ah. Uh. Ah. Okay. So buccal mucosa and gingiva all look healthy. Symmetrical rise and fall of the uvula on phonation. Um, and then I'm going to uh, get you to stick your tongue out. Okay and then uh, move it from side to side. Great, so cranial nerve 12 is intact bilaterally. Great, now this is a little bit uncomfortable, but it'll be quick. I'll get you to stick out your tongue. Okay. Is there any tenderness with that? Mm -mm. Okay, so on palpation, tongue was warm, no nodules or ulcerations noted. Okay, let me know if there's any pain or discomfort with this, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm just tilt your head this way and this way. And just lift up your shoulders like that. Okay, so all cervical lymph nodes were non-palpable. On inspection of the trachea, it appears midline, no deviations. Could you just flex your foot forward and swallow for me? And symmetrical rise and fall of the thyroid gland. Um, Courtney, I'm going to be doing checking your lungs now. So I'll actually get you to um, just uh, turn around the table so that your back is facing to me. Great. Do you mind if I undo this drape a little bit? No, that's fine. Okay. Great. Okay, so on inspection of the posterior thorax, uh, there seems to be nothing out of the ordinary. I'm just going to head and uh, palpate this. Let me know if there's any pain or discomfort with this. Nope. Okay, sorry, my hands are a little bit cold. <laughs> uh, so, uh, slight hypertonicity of the paraspinal muscles, but uh, they are non tender. And just uh, take a uh, breath in for me. Great. So, uh, symmetrical lung expansion. And uh, no, we're going to do this. I'll give, you, give, give yourself a hug for me. Okay. Say the number is 99. 99. And again. 99. And again. 99. 99. Great. So tactile feminist was present and equal bilaterally. Yeah, you can just keep on doing that. OK. 
Okay, so the level of diaphragmatic dullness was noted to be at about the level of T10. Um, and Courtney, you could just keep on doing the hug there. Um, resonant percussive note in all lung fields on the posterior. Courtney, I'm going to be taking a listen uh, to your back, so whenever you feel my stethoscope pus push against your uh, back, just take a breath in and out through your mouth. Let me know if you feel lightheaded at all and we'll stop. Great. Okay, so vesicular breath sounds heard in all uh, lung fields on the posterior. No adventitious breath sounds were heard. Let's do that up for, actually, no, I think I'll just leave that like that. Um, and I'll get you to just lay down this way. Great. So like we did on the back, I'm going to be checking your lungs from the front now. So I'll get you to just um, bring your, uh, the um, so I can see your shoulders a little bit, and I'm going to just be covering you with a gown here. And I'll get you. To, I'll hold this, and you just pull up your uh, gown, and then the drape can just be tucked into your undergarments. Great. Okay, and then if you want, you can hold the uh, gown kind of like a bikini. Okay. Great. So, uh, like we did before, say 99. 99. 99. 99. Great. So tactile feminist was present in equal bilaterally. And like we did before. Per uh, resonant percussive note in all lung fields. And again, just breaths in and out through your mouth whenever you feel this push against your skin. So vesicular breath sounds heard in all lung fields, no signs of adventitious breath sounds. Okay, Courtney, I'm going to be checking your heart now. So I'm going to just um, be elevating the table a little bit. So if you can just sit up for a second. Great. And then back down. Okay. So I'll get you just face the wall that way. Okay, so uh, jugular uh, venous pulsation is found to be at about uh, one and a half centimeters above the sternal notch. Crowded pulse has a brisk upward stroke, no thrills palpated. Just take a breath in and hold it for me. Great. So no breweries on auscultation of the carotids. On inspection of the precordial area, there are no pulsations noted.
Could you just roll over to your left hand side? Okay, so the PMI is uh, noted to be in the midclavicular line at the fifth intercostal space, about the size of a quarter. And just stay in that position for a second, Courtney. Okay, you can lie back on your back. Great. Great. So no murmurs heard on auscultation of the precordium. S1 and S2 were heard and were brisk. Uh, S3 and S4 uh, heart sounds were absent. Okay, so Courtney, I'm going to move on to the abdomen. So I'm just going to be lowering the table here. So just steady yourself for a second. Great. So on inspection of the abdomen, the umbilicus is centrally located. Just a few nevi, uh, nothing worrisome. I'm going to go ahead and take a listen. <laughs> Once again, yes, you can put that up, sorry. Okay, so normal abdominal sounds, uh, no uh, bruits heard on auscultation of the abdominal abdominal arteries. And I'm going to just go ahead and um, uh, percuss. Okay. It feels a little different, but it helps me hear what's going on underneath. Great. And then I'll get you just... Uh, Great, and with this uh, hand, can you just mark that point with your finger? Great. Okay, so the liver is found to be about uh, seven centimeters uh, in the midclavicular line. And Courtney, I'll get you to take a breath in. Out, great. So the splenic percussion sign was negative. And uh, I'll get you to just lift your knees. Okay. Okay, and just let me know if there's any pain with this? No, no? It's okay. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Okay, uh, so uh, no palpable masses in the abdomen. And I'm going to get you to take a breath in and out. And a breath in and out. And a breath in Great, and out. Okay, so liver was palpated, uh, the border was free of nodules. And again, a breath in and out. Breath in and out. And a breath in and out. And in again. Okay, so spleen is non palpable. This one's uncomfortable, and my hands are cold, I'm sorry. <laughs> so take a breath in and out. Okay, and I'll go around this way. And like we did on the other side, a breath in and out. Okay, so kidneys are non-palpable. You can put your knees down now. Okay. So I'll get you to uh, find your uh, pubic bone. Okay. okay. Uh, so trace down from your belly button and then just bring your, down, uh, your gown down as, as far as you're comfortable. Okay, and I'm going to just be um, checking your uh, uh, lymph nodes, okay? Okay. So first I'm going to just check your uh, abdominal aorta, okay? okay? Okay, so the abdominal uh, aorta pulsation is found to be about uh, two centimeters. Okay, and... Okay, so uh, uh, no palpable inguinal lymph nodes and the femoral pulses uh, were found 
um, to have a nice uh, brisk stroke. And okay, we're done now. You can bring uh, your gown down okay. and bring the untuck your the drape. Yeah. Great. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, be inspecting your legs here. So on inspection of the lower extremity, uh, just a few um, bruises, nothing really to worry about. Uh, Courtney, let me know if there's any pain with this. Okay. Oh, that's okay. No, that's all right? Yeah. Okay, so um, palpation of the joints was non-tender. No signs of pretibular edema. Um, Courtney, we're gonna do some range of motion. Okay. So I'll get you to bring your knees up to your chest. Okay, and then back down and then spread your legs apart, and then over and cross over, and the other way, then point your, te uh, your toes to the ceiling, and then back down to the floor, okay? And then bring your knees back up again, and just resist my force this way, resist my force this way, and then bring your, knee your legs down, resist my force this way, and resist my force this way, and your legs can come down all the way, resist my force this way, and resist my force this way. Great, so um, range of motion, Active range of motion was within normal limits, and pass, uh, resisted range of motion was 5 out of 5 for muscles tested. I'll get you to swing your legs up, and we'll start your the next part of the exam. Okay, Courtney, so we're going to be checking your uh, range of motion of your neck. So just follow the movements that I'm doing. Tilt you down to your shoulder, and this side, and then chin down to chest, and back, and then rotate over that shoulder, and then the other shoulder. Great, so active range of motion of the cervical spine was within normal limits. Um, so on inspection of the upper extremity, uh, muscles seem symmetrical, no sign of muscle wasting. Any pain with that? No. Nope. No, nope. so non-tender palpation of the joints of the upper extremity. And then just follow my movements. We're gonna go hands up like this, as far as you can, behind you, and then up this way, down below, and then hands up like this, and we're gonna go up and down. Great, so active range of motion of the upper extremity uh, was within normal limits, and then make this uh, position like this. Just resist my force this way, this way, this way, this way, great. And then uh, make this position, okay? Don't let me move your fingers, and this. Don't let me squish your fingers together, and then grab my fingers, and don't let me pull it out. Great. So resisted range of motion of the upper extremity uh, was five out of five for all must muscles tested. Okay, so now I'm going to be uh, checking your cranial nerves. Okay. So I'll get you to close your eyes and plug your right nostril. Okay, and take a breath in. Do you smell anything? Mm -hmm. What do you smell? Coffee. Great. And then switching hands and plug the other nostril. Take a breath in. Do you smell anything? Yeah. What do you smell? Lemon. Great, so cranial nerve one is intact bilaterally. You can open your eyes, Courtney. Just bite down, bite down again. Great, so sensory portion of cranial nerve five is intact bilaterally. Uh, Courtney, do you feel this as sharp and this as dull? Yep. Okay, and do you feel that? Yep. Okay, so uh, just let me know if you feel sharp or dull on your face. Uh, just close your eyes while I do this, okay? Okay. Uh, sharp, sharp, dull, sharp, dull. Sharp. Great. And then keeping your eyes closed, let me know when you feel that cotton swab. Yep. 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 Great. So sensory portion of cranial nerve 5 is intact bilaterally. And then we're going to make some funny faces. Okay. So a big smile and a frown. Puff out your cheeks. And then raise your eyebrows like you're surprised. Great. Uh, cranial nerve 7 is intact bilaterally. Lift your shoulders up like this. Don't let me push you down. Great, and just relax, and then don't let me push your head this way or this way. Okay, cranial nerve 11 is intact bilaterally. You can check your um, reflexes here. So just relax your arm. Great. Okay. Okay. And usually I would compare bilaterally for this exam, uh, but for sake of time, I'm just gonna do one side. So DTRs, uh, it was uh, two plus in all uh, DTRs tested. Okay, and Courtney, I'm gonna check your vibration sense. So I'll get you to just put your hands on your lap like so and close your eyes. When you feel a vibration start on your finger, let me know. Yep. 
and when it stops. Stopped. Great. And we'll do that again. Yeah. Stopped. Yeah. Stopped. Great. Yeah. Stopped. Great. You can open your eyes. So vibration sense was intact uh, um, in the upper and lower extremity bilaterally. And uh, Courtney, I'll get you to close your eyes okay. and put your hands uh, facing up in your lap. I'm going to place an object into your hand. Uh, just feel it and let me know what that is. A key. Great. And in this hand? A pen. Great. And now keep your eyes closed. I'm going to uh, write a letter into the palm of your hand. Just let me know what that number is. Or, sorry, a number. Seven. Great. Three. Excellent. You can open your eyes. So stereognosis and graphesthesia is intact bilaterally. So like we did before, I'm going to just check the sharpened doll uh, over your uh, body now, not just your face. So I'll get you to close your eyes. Let me know if you feel sharp or dull. Sharp. 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 Dull. Great. Sharp. 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 Dull. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Okay. Sure. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Great. You can open your eyes. So pain and light touch was uh, uh, sensed in all dermatomes tested. So Courtney, I'll get you to just uh, with your hands in your lap like this, go back and forth as fast as you can. Great. And now do this. Excellent. And then uh, with your foot, I want you to move it up and down rapidly into my hand and on this side. Great. And then bring your finger up to your nose and then touch my finger. Go back and forth as fast as you can. And I'm going to start moving it. Great. Now switch hands. Do the same thing. Great. And now I'll get you to bring uh, your heel up to your other leg and run it down your shin and then switch sides and do that again with your eyes closed. Great. So rapid alternating movements, point to point and heel to shin were intact bilaterally. Uh, so I'll get you, you can uh, stand now. Okay. okay. I'm going to check your lumbar range of motion. So just keep your hips still okay. uh, and just follow my movements with your back. So we're going to bend down this way and bend this way and forward. Great. And then twist, but not at the hip just at the back. Great. So lumbar range of motion was within normal limits. And Courtney, I'll get you to just put your feet together like this. Okay. Great. Do you feel pretty steady? Yeah. I'm here if you need me. Okay. I'll get you to close your eyes. Okay. You can open them. So usually I'd get, uh, I would test this for 30 seconds, but for sake of time, we'll just do like that. So negative Romberg sign. Okay. So bring your feet apart where you're comfortable. Okay. And your hands up in front of you like this and close your eyes. Okay, you can open them. Negative pronator drift. Courtney, I'll get you to just walk towards me on your heels and away from me on your toes. Great, and then towards me going heel to toe like this. Okay, and just away from me just how you normally would walk. Great, uh, that's the end of our physical exam. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, 